Hello everyone and welcome to The Shooting Show. On this week's episode, we join Tom Payne as he heads out after some Corvids, but then we join Chris Rogers as he's out trying to find himself some Robux. But first, let's join Tom Payne as he heads down to his local farm in Oxfordshire, hoping to bag himself a few Corvids. Hi, my name is Tom Payne and welcome to The Shooting Show. Uh, today you find me on a friend's farm in Oxfordshire. Uh, James, the farmer, has had a serious problem with black stuff on his maize clamp. Um, so we've had an early start this morning uh, to try and reduce a few numbers. And uh, joining me today is Maxwell, James's son. Uh, so hopefully we'll have a, a fairly good morning. Shot, mate. I'm a shot, mate. Shot. A second. Uh, so we're about 30 or so um, we've killed so far. I always find uh, when you're decoying black stuff, I tend to, it's very different with my pigeons, I decoy a lot closer, uh, only because they can give the impression that they are closer than actually what they are. Um, so Maxwell's just out there at the moment picking up um, what we've killed just to stop stuff sort of decoying too far back, um, too far back. Uh, so he's just bringing um, the further, further dead birds in, um, just so I, we don't want them starting to sort of just filter out on the on the, on, the, on the back. We want them sort of coming in on us because uh, because they can be a real. It's just it's, it's gauging the range on them when you're looking through the hide. You sort of you get up and you just only think, oh, that's slightly further away than actually what I thought. Um, so we won't leave the hide too much, but. We just just wanted to a bit of a tidy up just to bring stuff in a bit. So it's ten to seven, Maxwell in front. Um, and it's quite interesting, you'll see now. So, so basically what's, uh, the loader's out um, loading the digester, moving, and it's almost as if, um, it's so like, like the dinner bell's being rung, um, and suddenly, um, you know, black stuff is turning up all over the place. It's, it's actually quite interesting um, how it's suddenly switched on because we haven't really got the conditions for it. We haven't really got the conditions for it. Uh, we were hoping for overcast, a bit of wind this morning, but weather forecast hasn't come true. Uh, but it is amazing, uh, <laughs> literally, with the loader out, making a noise and suddenly it's all, uh, It's suddenly all um, going off. Oh. Yeah, you killed that. Um, yeah, very interesting.
Nice shot, mate. You can't, you can't, you can't, <laughs> you can't beat your mate who comes to drop your bacon sandwiches off. Your dad's a legend, Max, bro. Nice <coughs> shot, mate. Uh, so while Maxwell uh, picks up, uh, I thought we'd just bring you over just to show you the reason why we've been out early this morning and you can see the maze clamp all of that across the face there is all um, all damaged by the rooks and jackdaws and um, and you can sort of see the see the extent of the damage that's been caused and because of the situation we didn't want to shoot near the clamp so we've just based ourselves just out to the right and some rough ground so that brings uh, this morning's session to an end uh, we've been out here since half four the time is half eight uh, it's been a successful morning i hope i uh, hope you enjoy the program um, and i look forward to seeing everybody again soon thanks great shooting from tom there and now we join chris rogers from shooting and country tv as he's out on the estate hopefully trying to tackle their roebuck problem so we've got, there's a monk jack down in the corner there but we can't shoot it at the moment because we've got it's alongside the road so We'll just edge around this fence slowly and see if we can get it to go to the left. In line with that second light post. Yeah, you want it? Okay, just let it keep coming. I'm going to shoot in a second, yeah? So we're out the truck straight into it this morning on a sort of proper job uh, on the estate this morning. We're into uh, a carbon tree area, um, which we'll go and have a look at in a minute. But this grass field to my right was uh, obviously quite tall uh, hay grass, which has been cut the last few days and cleared off. Um, there was one monk jack left in this pen, which is, I don't know, 60 acre block maybe. Uh, obviously the tree guys are quite keen to get the deer out before the uh, the trees get too thick and we can't see them anymore so hopefully with this one down a young buck that's the area clear of those so with this one down we can now uh, go back outside the fence again and go stalking normally for cold roebuck and muntjac down the road and see if we can find something else. So we're just going to head a little bit down the road, uh, then cut across the estate. I just want to try and find a particular roebuck um, that I saw the other day out stalking and we couldn't get onto him uh, just before the rut starts, just try and get him cleared out of the way. Uh, obviously if we see something else that's on the, the coal list, we can take that as well. Um, but where this one lives is sort of, he's on the top of a little hill. So uh, it might be that we see him, but we can't shoot him because of the backstop or something. So if there's no chance there, we'll, we'll head round to uh, a carrot field that we looked on before when it was under plastic, see if there's anything there. And uh, if that doesn't work out, then we'll go to plan C or D, whatever one it is there. Another dough, I think, anyway. Yeah. 
We're parked up here on the top of this little hill. We're going to head down, see what the wind's doing down in the bottom there. We'll either go along the top of the big wood and have a look on the carrot field first, where we shot that roebuck on the plastic uh, a couple of episodes ago, or we'll go down through the bottom here and have a look over on this square of rough grass over my right shoulder in the distance, see if we can find that particular buck. Got a roebuck just walking away from us along the edge of the wood there, so. It looks a reasonably nice one from a distance, but we'll get a little bit closer, it might be one we can take. Jack Doe just feeding one of those carrots. We'll just see if it comes around for a broadside shot. Cool, good hundred metre shot on that monk jack doe. There was, I don't know if the camera's going to pick it up, but there was a, a red hind in the wood just uh, grunting at us in the distance, probably smelling us because the wind's coming from where the camera is over there, putting our scent into the wood. Good. Good, big old muntjac doe there. Um, yeah, too good an opportunity to pass up really, so some more carrots saved. Anyway, so we'll leave this here. We'll head down the hedge a bit and see if we can find the roebuck. Just take it to the edge of the field. Just keep still. There's no shot anyway. Just keep still. Might get a shot down the edge here. Woo! Well, there we go, another uh, quick scenario there. We obviously came up through the rough grass and uh, in towards the dock leaves where he was laid up a few days ago when, we, uh, when I came around here with a client. He did the same thing, ran to this hedgerow uh, down into the, the crop behind us. Um, obviously on the skyline he was safe anyway, we couldn't get a, a shot on him there. Um, luckily this time for us he ran down the crop um, and then came back into the hedge which meant there was a sort of 10 metre gap on the margin so I gave him a little shout and luckily he stopped and there wasn't any grass or anything in the way and uh, got a shot on him probably about 150 metres. So we'll give it a few minutes and we'll go and have a look. I'm pretty sure it's the one we wanted. So, uh, fingers crossed. So, great result. Um, obviously, when I shot, I was 99% sure it was the one we were after, but um, 
it's uh, you know a non-typical sort of slash going back old roebuck so a good one to take before the rut um, you can see on his right side he's just got two points and on the left side he's just got sort of one really the the main beam on on this side hasn't developed properly um, you can see if you look at him from the front on um, where the coronets are sloping down to the outside of the skull that's quite a good sign of a an old buck um, yeah he was a clever thing but it wasn't quite clever enough uh, shot on the front of the shoulder because the angle it was stood at and it's just come out behind the shoulder on the other side so a great result and um, 10 past six so that's us done we'll get these back to the larder and get them all cleaned out and uh, yeah try it again another day Those loaded up so we'll head back to the larder get those sorted out and in the chiller we were just chatting about in the truck um, the guys were wondering you know sort of why I went running off like that um, it wasn't just to be dramatic it's just that sometimes if you spook a deer like that so that roebuck he didn't really know we were there um, we obviously just sort of bumped into him and he's probably sort of sensed something was there rather than seeing us or smelling us so he jumped up and ran off um, we just stood still to start with and just had a look at him and then when he ran obviously that's when we started moving um, I tend to find if you can move quickly in a different sort of direction that when the buck stops again or the deer stops again um, they'll look back to where you were originally and obviously if they can't see anything there then they're slightly more happy so sometimes it's quite good to move to different spots if you can while they're running away obviously try not to trip over so we'll get these back to the larder. If you enjoyed watching that there, you can check out the full stalk with Chris at Country and Shooting TV. Sadly, that's all we've got time for on this week's episode of The Shooting Show. Make sure you like and subscribe for some more videos. And if you're not a member of Basque, now's the time to join. My name's Chris Castle and this has been The Shooting Show.